the bug type. Known to many as one of the weakest types in Pokemon. With three weaknesses, only three resistances, and only three types weak to it, being a bug Pokemon has always been challenging. Over the years, they've introduced more and more powerful bugs to help bring respect to the type and giving older bugs mega evolutions. Emerald Elite Redux is no different and has made efforts to boost bugs to the top. Maybe going a little overboard, creating new megas for bugs like Sheninja and Butterfree while buffing up old ones like Mega Beedrill who wasn't as viable as many had hoped. But in a game where overpowered Pokemon lurk around every corner, will these new mega forms be enough and should they have a spot on your team? Let's start with one of the most gimmicky Pokemon of all time, Shed Ninja. Only having one HP, it relies solely on its unique ability, Wonder Guard, to protect it. Now, Wonder Guard only allows super effective moves to hurt it. There are some cases where it can be okay, but it's not really good at all. So, they gave it a Mega Evolution, giving it four abilities and way more speed and power, boosting its attack from 90 to 120 and its speed from 40 to 110 bringing it now to a base stat total of 376, which is worse than all middle stages of the starters. Like with regular Sheninja, it relies solely on its unique ability, Cheating Death. Now, Cheating Death allows for Mega Sheninja to take two free hits before it takes damage, which will kill it instantly. Its other ability, Magic Guard, also helps protect it from taking damage from non-attacks like Burn, Toxic, or Entry Hazards. Its rather low attack power is boosted by its ability, Adaptability, doubling its stab damage, and Tinted Lens, which hits not very effective moves normally, which is great for bug type moves. So, how can it use Cheating Death to its advantage? Well, two free turns allows it some setup. Swords Dance is going to be its best friend here. It can get a plus four to its attack, then it can strike. In fact, its base form with Wonder Guard can help it here too. If it's sent out against a foe that has no moves for it, they will switch out, allowing a free Swords Dance and a potential plus six. Its speed is decent, so if it outspeeds, moves like x Scissor and Phantom Force will do huge damage, but if you're going to be outsped, Shadow Sneak, Extreme Speed, and Sucker Punch will help it hit first. You can also run Toxic or Will-O-Wisp to stop something threatening your team. But how good does this actually all make Mega Ninja? Well, not very good at all. In fact, it may be the worst Mega in this game. First off, if Stealth Rocks are up, it's dead in your party because it has no chance to enter the field without dying unless you clear them. Multi-hit moves are going to waste cheating death right away and this includes Pokemon with multi-head and hyper-aggressive. Priority moves and taunt can shut it down and worst of all, even with a plus six, it still might not be enough to get a knockout. It would have been better if they took its literally useless defensive stats, put 44 in attack, 29 in speed. Not to mention, Getting a Sheninja in this game destroys the one Pokeball you get, and I'm not sure you can get another one. It's a fun Pokemon as a concept, but with all the great Megas to choose, it would just be a mistake to have. One of the OG Mega Evolutions, Mega Beedrill, was one of the weakest Pokemon to ever receive one. Only having a higher base stat total than Mega Sableye and Mega Mawile, who gets huge power, so it's not really that bad. It's one of my favorite Megas for its design, and I've actually been able to make it work in the past, and it's definitely underrated. I was happy to find out they buffed up its stats in these games and its moves. Now with 175 speed instead of 145, and a slight boost to its defense, it sits at 575 base stat total. Its four abilities are all built on boosting the power of Beedrill's attacks as it wants to one-shot everything in its path. It gets adaptability to double stab on bug and poison moves. It gets hyper aggressive, which causes its moves to hit two times, which is great when a Focus Sash or Sturdy Pokemon gets in the way. Merciless, which makes all moves a critical hit if they're poisoned, have their speed reduced, or if they're paralyzed. So Sticky Webs or Toxic Spikes being up make Beedrill even crazier. And lastly, it levitates to avoid ground moves while giving it some boost to its flying type attacks. Mega Beedrill has a wide variety of moves and can hurt you in multiple ways. The main strategy I find useful is when using the move Fell Stinger. Now Fell Stinger is a rather weak bug move that boosts your attack by three stages if you get a knockout with it. Not only is it slightly buffed in this game, it gets boosted by adaptability and hitting twice makes it easier to get a knockout. With the now insane 175 speed and a plus three in attack, it is ready to tear through teams. You can even use Fell Stinger again to get a maxed out attack. 
Other moves like Cross Poison, Drill Run, Drill Peck, Mega Horn, Knock Off, Brick Break, and Frustration give it plenty of coverage options. It's not a tank by any means, but it can survive a hit if it comes to it. With all these upgrades, is it a good Mega? Honestly, I believe it is. There are definitely better Megas out there, but this has great potential and would not be a wasted slot. It has flaws for sure. Priority moves will stop it if they're strong enough. Fell Stinger may fail to get the KO, so just be careful when choosing your revenge kill. And it can struggle to get KOs if it doesn't have the plus three. Overall though, I think this Mega really helps Beedrill shine. Now it wasn't fair that Butterfree's Generation 1 counterpart got a Mega, and it was left with nothing. Eventually, it got a Gigantamax form, but only for three turns, and it didn't make much of an impact. But instead of letting that form fade away, it has been brought back and has finally given Butterfree a proper Mega form. With slight boost to its base form stats, Mega Butterfree sits at 515 base stat total, with incredible special attack and defense sitting at 145 and 125 respectively. Its stat spread is phenomenal, and its abilities really make it a threat. Even starting at the base form, a major piece to Butterfree's game is the ability Majestic Moth, which raises its highest stat by one on entry. Make this its speed, and its 110 speed stat becomes very viable. After it mega evolves, the strength really comes out. It gets Tinted Lens to hit all not very effective moves with normal damage. It gets Magical Dust, which will change the foe's type to Psychic, making them very vulnerable to bug type moves, although a strong contact move will most likely kill Butterfree anyway. It gets Levitate to avoid ground moves and boost flying moves. And lastly, Compound Eyes, which is the key to its mega skill set. This is because of its access to Sleep Powder, which is a reliable 90% accurate move, and it is a very fast Pokemon with a plus one at the start. Putting foes to sleep before they can attack. The AI will usually switch after this, and since the game has a built-in one sleep Pokemon clause, you might as well go for a Quiver Dance, boosting your special attack, special defense, and speed. Now, Butter Free is Butter Free to destroy their entire team with strong moves like Bug Buzz, Psychic, Hurricane, Giga Drain, or Draining Kiss. Does this all make it a great Mega though? I believe so, but I do have some issues with it. After you Mega, if you need to switch out, you won't have access to Majestic Moth anymore, which makes it vulnerable. It is also extremely allergic to Sucker Punch, and really any physical move. In my opinion, it's really just a solid upgrade to Vivillion, which was an underrated Pokemon I covered in my first video, but you don't need to waste a Mega Slot on that, and it does its job very well. It's really about what fits your team best. Overall, this game has definitely improved these once laughable bugs. While they aren't the greatest bugs in these games, they are usable. With lots of powerful Pokemon in the game to compete against, they can hold their own and would make any bug catcher proud. So that was my breakdown to some of the buffs made to these lower powered bugs. Let me know if there's any other Pokemon you'd like to see me go over, and check out some of the other Megas I've covered in the past, and subscribe for future videos. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.